I do think we're in the middle of a revolution. My little corner of the world is primarily focused on voice communications and telephony, and that is for sure in the middle of a revolution. I realized out of 20 conference calls I'd get on, 19 of them would be a phone call. And the fact that literally nothing has changed in the last 25 years, like the audio conferencing system that I use today is the same one that I used in 1994 when I first got out of law school. What happened? Where is the innovation? To me, there's just this amazing opportunity to still use interesting new technologies. Like if everyone's carrying a tablet around with them, can I move the controls for that call out to the tablet but leave the call through the phone? That'd be pretty slick. I grew up in the Bay Area and went to Berkeley for college and law school. Ended up working in the Valley as an attorney representing a lot of startup companies and venture capitalists. It felt a little limiting to be the attorney working on these deals, whereas you kind of wanted to be the guy you know, working on the company. So it was late 90s. The internet was going crazy. All these business models were changing. And one of my clients was starting a venture fund. You know, it was a great opportunity to leave a law firm and go join a venture capital fund. And then one of our investments, Dalped Communications, which was a voice over IP company, they kind of got into trouble in 2000 when the whole internet bubble burst and they needed someone to go in as CEO to basically try to turn it around. And at that time, it looked like it was a hopeless cause. So either I was stupid enough or just risky enough or naive enough to raise my hand and said I was willing to do it and started operating, running that company. It was like operating on a corpse at the beginning. Expectations were zero. We were saving every penny and the team that we rebuilt it with took 20% pay cuts across the board for years. It did all turn out. Dalpad became Yahoo Voice. So making phone calls out of the Yahoo Messenger client, it was the Dialpad technology. So after Dialpad got acquired, I really wanted to do more. And I didn't, you know, I didn't want to be at a big company and I wanted to see, okay, now if I were to start something from scratch, can we do it right from the beginning and not have to go through a turnaround? I'd been talking to Halsey Miner, founder and CEO of CNET, who had his own venture fund. I wanted to go start this new company. He wanted to invest in a company like that. So Halsey said, look, I'll give you a quarter million dollars so you can leave today and start actually working on this full time. So the money hit the bank at like 11 a.m. By 1 p.m. I had quit. And by like 2 p.m. I was in the office working on Grand Central. The idea behind Grand Central was you got a cell phone, you got a work phone on your desk, you got a home phone and you have three different voicemail systems, three different phone numbers, and if someone wanted to reach you, basically they'd have to find you at one of these three locations. Let's have one number that's just Craig, that will ring me anywhere I tell it to. It'll just be one number, it's my number for life. That Craig number never changes, just the underlying things would change. So we put the team together, um, they joined at the beginning of January, and by September 25th, we launched the product. The press loved it, users loved it. And it's one of those things like, hey, why hasn't this existed before? Truth be told, there were other efforts to do it. They're massive markets, usually dominated by big companies, AT&T, Verizon, that have horrible design. But we were able to do it in a way where it didn't cost a ton of money, so we were able to give it away for free. And that definitely helped to get a lot of traction. Started having some meetings at Google, and they acquired us in July. One of the reasons we sold to Google, we thought, you know, if any company is going to be fun and cool enough to let us do what we want to do, Google would be kind of crazy enough to do it. It was pretty much, hey, welcome to Google. You guys are, you know, the Grand Central guys who got acquired. Kind of figure it out for yourself and, you know, good luck. They kind of just gave you that freedom. But it felt inside there a little bit like a startup. Like we were going to be able to relaunch if we could figure all this stuff out and build a great product that would fit well within Google. And so that's, you know, that's what we were able to do. So we took our Grand Central technology, Googleified it basically to be able to run in all the Google data centers. And we now know that there's tens of millions of people using it. it is great. Dialpad was such just a labor. Dialpad was such like taking everything down to the studs and rebuilding it, you know, inch by inch. And you know, I think Grand Central almost was kind of like a karmic payback. It was, you know, like that was so hard. And with Grand Central, things seemed to just go so smooth. 
So I left Google two years ago and I went to Google Ventures as their entrepreneur in residence. And I was kind of burnt out on telephony for a while, but conferencing was one that I really hadn't thought much about. I realized, hey, you know, conference calls, no one's innovating here at all because they're all innovating on how do we do video conferencing. And so we ended up coming up with Firespotter Labs, which is a bit of an incubator where we can work on other projects that, that cross our minds. But we really have put a lot of our effort into Uber Conference. I think that you will find that most of the people that work with Craig will jump at the opportunity to work with Craig again. It kind of reminds me of being in like a band in college, kind of like, where most of the time it's, it's kind of chaotic and crazy, but there's definitely like, you know, a shared goal and it's like the lead singer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's a, temp exactly. yeah. He's a temperamental lead singer. Yeah. You'll never get the record contract <laughs> without him. When he started working on it, like, okay, we can solve this pretty easily. I think he mm. had spent a night playing video poker and decided that the video poker interface was going to revolutionize conference calling. And there were Bloody Marys involved, as there yeah, usually are. It's a with, felt table. With Craig, yeah. We're going to have a system where when you dial into a conference number, it's going to identify you by your caller ID. We put a web browser on it so I can see everyone who's on the call. And when people haven't dialed in, they're grayed out, and as soon as they dial in, they come to life. We show you, hey, here's the guy who's talking. We light him up, he takes over this little podium position, click on the guy's picture, and up comes the LinkedIn profile. Up comes his Google Plus profile. And it just gives you the ability to have much better context of who you're talking to. We launched in May of 2012 at TechCrunch Disrupt in New York City. Uber Conference mission is to be the best conference call system in the world ever. Great launch forum, 40 companies going in and competing to be you know, the best startup. We were lucky enough to win that. And so we were, won the Disrupt Cup. They gave us $50,000, which was great. Um, we got a lot, of, you know, a lot of good coverage and a lot of momentum coming out of that. You couldn't imagine a better launch for a product because um, just being there, you, you reach a lot of people because it's a very well-covered event. But then winning, obviously, Anytime people mention Disrupt now, they mention Uber Conference, you reach a lot more people that yeah. way. And we went from you know, zero to tens of thousands of users in you know, a week. The ability to be online, on your phone, from anywhere in the world, and fully accessible, and fully reachable, and fully productive is changing everything. The advent of the iPad, the advent of the smartphone, is just going to make communications totally different five years from now and hopefully you know, we'll have some small part in helping that along. So you're here for our traditional Friday at four all hands meeting. I think everyone knows that we are launching publicly, fully launched, kick-ass Uber Conference V2 on December 10th. The whole point is everyone here is a stakeholder in the company, so we want to have a forum for everyone to be able to ask any question, no holds barred. We want to encourage people to feel you know, empowered to ask and, and to know what's going on. After Friday at four, it'll break into a beer pong game, ping pong, but after every single one, there's a dart match between the design team and the product team. Product had lost three in a row, which is devastating because I'm on that team. But today, we regained the trophy. We are now the undisputed dart champs of Firespotter Labs, and hopefully we'll hold on to it for a while. We're now up to nearly 50 employees, so we've more than doubled our team. We moved from our prior office in Pleasanton, California to downtown San Francisco. The conference calling was the first easy piece to be super disruptive at. When we started Uber Conference two years ago, the idea was sitting around a table, effectively being a virtual conference room. So we did a lot of design elements around that. It really made a very stark you know, first impression. Now we can do a lot of interesting collaborative stuff. We can do things like screen sharing, a giant web conference, effectively unlimited number of participants. Rather than trying to get people to think this is ridiculously different, now we're trying to say this is ridiculously easy. As far as you know, working for a living, to be in control of your own destiny and to be able to like work on things that you think up and be able to work with amazing people that you've chosen to work with, I mean, it makes the days go like that. I wake up, I'm excited to go to work every single morning. I just can't wait to get there. You get to live once 
and you get one opportunity to make an impression or to make the world a better place in some small way. And if you can do that, you know, you almost should do that. For me, it's, you know, it's the only way to live.